Alright, so this is going to be an unscripted, just rambly thoughts of me, of my opinions of the FanFest first event, the, the keynote, with all the releases and all that. And there's also going to be the live letter today, but I'm recording this on Saturday. So, just going to get right into it, just going to ramble. I have notes here just to give me a list of things to talk about, but all that, it's all just going to be unscripted, just my thoughts. And as the title suggests, I'm going to be as spoiler-free as possible. Anytime I give spoilers, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to warn you and say, skip ahead to the next timestamp, because I'm going to have the, the table of contents below Use the chapter select to get around the spoilers anytime I do want to talk about spoilers. Because there's a couple things I do want to talk about. But I can't just because, you know, spoilers. And I want to be spoiler free for everyone so that even, like, a Realm Reborn people can watch this. So if I say, hey, skip ahead now, please do it, be warned. Okay, so. We begin with the full opening trailer, which, holy crap, things went way more intense than I was expecting. Like, yeah, ever, ever, things are going down. And then things went, like, three times as down. What I wasn't expecting was how different the music and lyrics were, because, like, before it was all, like, uh, uh, auto-tuned and all that. And now it's just full-on clear lyrics. You can actually understand what's being said. And it gives it a very different feel. It also helps that now they're going through all of the expansions in the music. They're not just, here's the Endwalker theme, and it's the whole Endwalker theme. They went through some of Heaven's Word theme. They went through Stormblood's theme. They went through some of the Shadowbringers theme. They're evoking the entire journey up to this point, and it's really good, and hopefully they release a, uh, a, a someone will probably do it, a song-only cut, or they'll do what they did with Endwalker and release the, the first trailer without the music, or without the sound effects. So we'll get the, se the new trailer without the sound effects, and we'll have the full music just to listen to and everyone will be able to listen to it and not just oh no the the evil villain is talking about his plans and the plot i can't watch this because of that that way even people who aren't caught up can watch it they also revealed a couple things during it but i'm going to save those topics for those sections just cuz they fit better and i it's better to get around the spoilers that i want to talk about so Let's get right on to the first major thing they mentioned was Reaper, the new melee. It looks cool, but how does it play? And I'm, I'm just, I'm so glad it is actually maiming. I was waiting for that interview to be a big misdirection of it's actually scouting, because even the artifact armor looks more scouting than it does maiming. So I was kind of really afraid, but now I can actually be judge and pretend it's judge and have a ghosty friend. The animations look nice, but we need to see how it actually plays before I give any full, oh my god, this is the best ever. Uh, but there is the lore aspect of it that is like, why? Why are you doing this? Because the lore is our little ghosty friend is a void scent. And our little like ascended form that we go into to power up and do bigger attacks. We have them possess us? No? No, why would we ever do that? Have we learned nothing from the entirety of the story? Have we learned Nothing from Edda? Have we learned nothing from the Thaumaturge Guild quest? Have we learned nothing from the Void Arc series in the Shadow of Mach? Have we learned nothing about trusting the Void for anything? This is the worst idea ever. 
Why would you do this? How how are they going to justify this? Letting a void scent possess us is one of the worst ideas for in lore. Worst ideas in lore reasons for a job. Why like is it because we're so powerful as the warrior light that we can control them? I don't know what else it could be because summoning a ghost that will also control us and is a void scent recipe for disaster. Also, I want to note that on the slide they had a Rothgar in the, the artifact armor and he was not wearing the hat, which is not a good sign. That is a very bad sign. Also, it's going to start in Ulda, which is the best city, but also I expected it to start in Gridania or Limsa. Because it isn't... Didn't they announce Sage was going to start in Limsa? So, Gridania being the the, uh, the, the, the Reaper area would have made sense for two each. But I guess we're going to have three in Ulda, which is fine with me because Ulda is the best. Oh well. Oh, and Yoshida came out in a Reaper cosplay, which he looked really good, and he is a national treasure. He works... I want to know how much of the cosplay is his doing and not just having costume department put it together, how much of it was him. But either way, he, he kills it. He works super hard to even just wear it. Cosplay is amazingly hard. And we're going to apparently see the job in action, at least from an NPC, in 5.55, the finale to the main story. Though I guess it's 5.56, actually, I think. Either way, we're apparently going to see it. And now I'm going to get into some of the spoilers, but... Okay, so, if you find new areas being, uh... Spoilers that, oh, this is a new area, this is a new area, this is a new area. They announced all a bunch of the new areas, and I think they left one unannounced. If you find all of the locations a spoiler, you may want to skip ahead to the next timestamp. Though I guess I'm going to talk about characters next, so skip two ahead. But, yeah, I'm going to get into all the different areas now. And starting off with, I guess I'll start with what they already announced with, we're still going to Thavnia and Raditzan. That, and it looks, they showed more of it, and my initial reaction was, it looks like someone chewed up a rainbow and spit in my face. I don't know what it is, like, I know India is always, like, shown off as a super colorful place, and... It's so vibrant. This looks like they took that idea and went three steps further with it. It looks like overkill. Like for a game area, it's a bit much. I don't know. I, I think it's just a bit too colorful when it comes to some of the architecture. Maybe in the town areas, it's a bit more subdued and makes more sense. But some of the things they showed were like, this is nearly blinding to look at. Like, oh my god. Now let's talk about the new areas they announced. The first off, which was in the trailer, was Old Charlian. We're going home to Old Charlian. And they even showed us a little bit of it in the- they showed us the town of it. They showed us the Warrior of Light walking around and it looks pretty good. For the beta footage, it looks good. But one thing was, one of the pictures I noticed in the background, there was what looked like to be a Limsa Lominsa ship. So we're definitely taking a Lominsa ship to there. Like, obviously, like, they would give us a ship with, Oh my god, everything's happening, we have to go talk to Charlian. Back to old Charlian with you. Thank you, uh, Melwerb. But... Most interesting about this section, I, uh, I thought was that they mentioned some 1.0 info in that originally in 1.0, they wanted to have the starting states of Ulda, 
Limsa, Gridania, Ishgard, Alamigo, and Old Charlian. All six of them to start as starting areas. That would have been a lot of work, holy crap. And now we're only just now finally reaching Old Charlian. An original 1.0 idea is now something we're only just now getting to in Endwalker. That's, that's hugely paced apart. And then another area that they showed off that I think is in Old Charlene somewhere, underground apparently, is Labyrinthos. Labyrinthos, or however you pronounce it. It looks like a near area. It To me, like the, the concept art, it looked like a near area. With how like the grass was overgrowing on everything. I don't know, it gave me near Automata vibes. It's definitely not going to be a continuation to the near stuff, but it looked like it to me. Further, on top of that, they finally told us about... I mean, they already told us that we're going to Garlemald, but they showed us a little bit of Garlemald, and that was in the Reaper trailer too. The Reaper trailer took place in the Gimlet Dark for the little intro section, and then for fighting an enemy, it was in the outskirts of the destroyed city of Garlemald. I guess the capital of Garlemald. Because you could see in the background destroyed buildings, it was all snowy and white. At first I thought it was ash, but it's it, definitely snow. And then I think you could see the giant tower at a point. You could at least see mountains in the background. And then finally for the named zones, they gave us Mare Lamentorum, I think. I think that's how you pronounced it, how they pronounced it. Mare, Mare, Lamentorum. And that has a translation, I already forgot what it is. Something about sacrifice or suffering, I forget. I remember saying it a bunch, but I've already forgotten it now. But it is totally just... Final Fantasy IV, or Final Fantasy IV, the moon. That's it. That that's lot. That's the area. It's basic. The palace from Final Fantasy IV is where we're going. And also, somehow we can walk on the moon, and there's air. There's air on the moon. But also, I think that's because in the scene where they show off the area, uh. There was an Alag construct, like one of the pillars of Dalamud, was on the actual moon. So I think Alag had plans for the moon. Or at least they were told to by the Ashians to do something on the moon. And so there's air on the moon because of Alag. Because Alag. But there was also one area that they showed but did not name. I don't know what it's for, if that's an area we're actually going to or what, but it looked like Chrono Trigger. They showed off what looked like to be the Floating Kingdom of Zeal. It looks like we're going to Zeal. Which, is that, are we actually going to get some Chrono Trigger stuff involved? Or does it just take heavy inspiration? Because that my, my first reaction was... This is Chrono Trigger. This is Zeal. Am I right? Am I wrong? Who knows? But they were very hush-hush about it. Like, hey, look at this area. We're not going to say anything about it, but who knows? And now I want to talk about the characters that they revealed and who they are. So here's another extra spoiler warning just in case I want to talk about characters. This is definitely spoilery. So, three, two, one. Xenos is the new job, which we knew that from, like, the beginning. That was kind of obvious. Istinian is going to be joining us. He's as badass as, as ever. And it looks like he's using the new artifact armor for Dragoon. And he has a new dragon that isn't Tiamat. He has Vitra with him. So he went from, I am going to live my life to kill Nidhogg. I am personally offended by this specific dragon, and I want to kill him. 
and now just like overnight he's tamed quote unquote Tiamat and now he's just gonna go off and tame Vitra two of the 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 first brood he's gonna be all buddy buddy with them and he like where where does Vitra come from does he go off to Thavnir by himself does, is Vitra in the new world is that where she came from because we know there's dragons in the new world somewhere there could be one of the first brood there because Tiamat was there where did Vitra come from is it be is it Thavnir just because that's named after I think it's the Hindu god. So, wh where do they come from? They just come out of nowhere. We're gonna, maybe we're gonna find out in the finale to uh, Shadowbringers, but that's gonna be very soon. We'll have to see what happens. But also, most interestingly, is when we got to Old Charlian and Stola was talking to the head of the forum. That is one thousand percent. Alphino and Alice's dad. That is their father. I don't have the lore books or anything, but apparently the answer is in the lore book. I don't have the lore book, but I saw him like, that is definitely their dad. There is no other way. I don't remember Alphino saying anything about his dad being the head of the forum, just being part of the forum. Maybe he did say head of the forum at some point, but that dude is the head of the forum and is definitely Alphino and Alize's dad, which way to make yourself out to look like the worst loser ever, dude. Oh boy, I'm going to save the world, said Louis Swa. Oh boy, grandfather is awesome, said Alphino and Alize. I'm gonna be an idiot who wants the world to end, said Alphino's dad. Like, come on, really? Are you that stupid? I don't care what you are, old Charlian. You're stupid. Oh, but maybe Matoya will be back. Matoya has to show up somewhere and be like, You idiots are still behind the times. I helped this girl do a billion different things. And there's a lot of interesting stuff out there that we need to study and blah 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 and be her usual Matoya self. Another thing that they announced was another of the primals, or at least what I is definitely gonna be the primal of Thavnir. In the first one, we got the fact that we're getting Anima in the game. Anima from Final Fantasy X is gonna be in the game. This time they announced that we're getting the Mega Sisters. We're getting the Mega Sisters in Thavne. They didn't say where, they just said, hey, we're getting the Mega Sisters, which is definitely going to be in Thavne because they're colorful. And that's where the Matanga are going to be, who are where also last, last event thing, they were wearing colorful uh, clothes. So. The, the Mega Sisters are the primal of the Matanga, and Anima is up on the moon with the Loperits, because they also announced this time that they, we have the Loperits, which is another tribe. They're bunny people, which obviously are going to be on the moon, because bunnies and moon and all that. So that, I, th a lot of that's just speculation. They have not announced any actual connections to these. But they announced the Matanga, they announced the Lopridge, they announced Anima, they announced Delta Sisters. They didn't connect them all. But, using basic connection, Mega Sisters are in Thavnir, they're the Matanga. Anima is with the Lopridge Beast tribe. So who knows all else that there's gonna be? There's gonna be a lot, obviously, but that's just some of the basic stuff that they showed off with those. They didn't really sit, go into details with them. And then they started going into more of like a recap of stuff of like, hey, here's all the stuff we already announced, which the Matanga was part of that. But then they men mentioned the, the, the Ishgard housing that we're getting. And they also mentioned that they do want to try to adjust housing a bit to make things better, to give people a chance and reduce RMT and the housing selling from the idiots who house sell. So that's good. 
And then they also brought back up data center travel. The data center travel stuff, they was a bunch of waffling mostly that, hey, we're g this is going to be huge. We're trying to make things work. But they also mentioned that battle is actually going to be a thing. So there's going to be restrictions still, but raiding cross data center is still on the table. You're not going to be stuck to your data center. So Crystal is no longer going to be a husk. They could just data center travel. Or, you know, they could buy a world transfer. You know. But hey, what can you do? Self-fulfilling prophecy of all the raiders leaving in mass, Leaving there being no raiders. Because some one person, like... I guess, made stuff up and then made it a self-fulfilling prophecy of there's no gonna be raiders! That's what happens when all the raiders leave because you say there's no raiders. There's no raiders. Oh my gosh, ah, ah. And then also they, for the things they mentioned last time that didn't go into, they mentioned that last time the 24-man series is going to be about a piece of Eorzean lore we've never gone into. To which we're gonna go into Myths of the Realm, and it's going to be about the Twelve. Because that's the picture they showed, was I, I guess that's the, uh, the, the the wedding area. They showed the the thing with all the Twelve symbols on. So are, are we killing Twelve Gods? Are those going to be all Twelve fights with killing all of the Twelve? Are we finally finishing what Louis Swat started with trying to summon them? We're going to kill the Twelve? Get in, loses. We're killing 12 gods. Get in my space whale. And then they talked about some of the dungeons we're going through. There's one specifically that was, like, really, like, striking to me. Like, they showed off the... Last time they announced there's going to be, like, an H.I.R. Geiger-looking dungeon. There's going to be... I already forgot what the third one looks like, but... The one that really struck me, I guess, is going to be in the one area they announced this time. It looks like a Four Fiends kind of area. This is the expansion of Final Fantasy IV. And the, the dungeon looked like it had four areas of elements. So the Four Fiends are going to be the bosses. Hmm, thinking that it's, it's just speculation on my part, but the people who are looking forward to the four fiends in any form, you're probably not getting them as a raid boss or anything, but you might get them for a dedicated dungeon. So look forward to that question mark. Oh, the, the other area was looked like to be uh, a Thavnir dungeon. That was it. The last one was a Thavnir dungeon. Thank you, notes. I would have forgot. Yay. But yeah, it's... I mean, they're dungeons. Who knows what we're gonna actually do in them. Dungeons are always ever dungeons. They're rarely ever hard. But we'll see. And then they started talking about the actual purchasing of stuff. So we have the Collector's Edition. There's a figure of a paladin doing Passage of Arms. A whole bunch of art. And a Zem pin, a Loperit, and it's like, eh, yeah, some nice stuff. I want the Amano art as a full-sized poster. I will dedicatedly buy that. And apparently the Collector's Edition is already completely sold out. But also, interestingly, buying that is also kind of separate from the actual game because they're going basically... Well, they're going all digital for the game. Is what I'm trying to say, because apparently last time, 85% of all purchases were digital. So they're not giving any CDs anymore for any collector's editions. They're not giving you CDs anymore. It's all just going to be digital download for the expansion, which makes sense. It also because pandemic and all that. But also there is the digital collector's edition... Which comes with an Arion. I they pronounced went through like how many different pronunciations of it. Arion, I'm just gonna say. It's a horse, it looks boring. You also get Porum, 
the sister of the twins from Final Fantasy IV as a minion and a scythe glamour, which looks nice, but also, eh, I could just use an ultimate, ultimate weapon scythe or like a primal glam or something. Because maybe we're going to get like a Hades scythe or something. I don't know. We'll have to see, but I want a glowy scythe and not just a boring plain scythe. I can always upgrade later if I decide against it. And then also there's the pre-order bonuses of Memphina's Earring, which is a level 80 earring for plus EXP, just like all the other pre-order bonuses we've had in previous. A EXP boosting earring that is also very good for stats. Palum for a minion who is the brother and is a giant nerd who makes a Realm Reborn Alpha No look like a saint. And then finally, we got the release date. November 23rd. The week of Thanksgiving. Yikes. That is some timing. But at the same time, holiday season was kind of unavoidable at this point between the pandemic and their own issues internally and all that. And everything else they're trying to do. It's to be expected that it's going to take a while. Give them the time. I can be patient, mostly. Kind of. Give it to me now. And then they made two final surprise announcements. The first was Limited Races Are Dead, Long Live Limited Races, Mayo Vieira, and at some point in the future afterward, Female Hrothgar. People were so, so insistent on getting male Vieira that they're actually giving male Vieira. Oh my god. They actually did it. I didn't even realize it was male before. I just thought the point was that it, she had a helmet on and, oh look, a helmet. They can actually wear helmets now. Ha, wow. But no, it was actually the fact that it was actually a male Vieira and not a female Vieira, which I didn't even realize until someone told me. I just thought it was the hats because they were wearing a like visor. So who knows what's going to go on with that, but there's going to be a lot of happy people going male Vieira and eventually a bunch of happy people going female Rothgar, which we didn't get to look at them. We only got to see male Vieira, which look a little bit shorter, like closer to more like max height, uh... Uh, I guess I would say max height here, they look like, but also with the ears on top. But of course, they didn't show them next to other races, so you couldn't really tell. So we'll have to find out eventually, but they looked shorter than the females, that's for sure. To me, at least. And then also, finally, the big final announcement. They wanted to have this before 6.0. There's going to be new data center for Oceana. They're putting a data center in Australia. I know a lot of people who are playing in Oceana. So the fact that they're giving an Oceana data center is really, really, really good. That's that's amazing for all of them. I am I'm very happy for them. Extremely happy for them. Oh. Like like, it doesn't affect me at all, basically. It's not gonna affect me at all. But, I'm happy for them. I'm very, very happy for them. Finally, they can play without tons and tons of lag. And it's gonna be in 6.1. So they have to wait a while, but 6.1 they can play without lag. If they sh And it's probably gonna give free data center transfers to everyone who wants to go there. So they don't even have to pay to get it. It's free. They just have to be ready to say goodbye to everyone on the other servers and just data center travel anytime they want to say hi otherwise. Or use Discord or something. And then they brought out all the people. It was the, the, like, that was the end. That was the final announcement. Then they brought out all the, like, heads of development and the CEO. And they also brought out a giant Moogle and a an Alpha. 
And Alpha, whoever was in the Alpha costume was killing it. They were dancing so much. I appreciate all the developers who came out and were speaking. All the leads of music, the writing, the graphics, everything. I appreciate these devs so much for what they do. But the person in the Alpha costume stole the show from everyone. They were dancing so much. They looked so happy to be there. It was probably like 300 degrees in that thing. But they, they pulled it off and they are the unsung hero of Final Fantasy 2021 Fan Fest. They were great and I want to meet them and shake their hand from a distance. Mind shaking because social distancing. But, you know, that it, it was great to watch them. They, they were happy to be there, even if it was just such a minor role. They, ah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gushing on this one person who probably wasn't even on the dev team, but they deserved recognition too, and also the person in the Moogle suit, because that was probably also hard, but oh my god, the person in the Alpha suit was just so happy to be there. Yeah, and that, that was it. That was the end of the event. They announced things were officially opened, announced the schedule, and now we just have to wait for the live letter today, because I'm hopefully going to be uploading this today. Tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 uh, Pacific, I think it was, is going to be the live letter event with more info, more spoilers. I'll probably do another video on that, but I wanted to get this one out to say, hey, here's a recap that's as minimal on the spoilers as possible. Enjoy. Be excited for all the announcements that we're getting. So yeah. Thanks for watching. May the power of Anna Nidhogs are waste to your enemies. Enjoy FanFest. Enjoy Endwalker. All that. And cue the patron scroll and all that. I'm going to cut in with the editing in of my patrons now. Okay, bye. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Amen Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfie, Scott Stanley, Valor LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. If you'd like to become a patron, the link is down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. And join me in the Discord if you'd like.